as much as I would like to attend one of your lectures to get uh, like some of uh, your enthusiasm. Uh, I'd be also very interested to hear from Dr. Ayman about the telemetry system uh, that we have here at the ministry. Uh, Dr. Ayman received his master's. She's done. So Dr. Ayman got his master's degree from Colorado State University and pursued his PhD at Cairo in fields of artificial intelligence and image processing. And he has been working for the Egyptian Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation for more than 30 uh, years now, a lot of experience. Uh, his current position is the head of the monitoring system, communications, information, and asset sector. And without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Ayman to come and share with us uh, some of the information about the telemetry system here in the, in the ministry. Thank you, Dr. Nisham. It is my pleasure to be here and uh, talking, uh, have a talk in this very interesting uh, session. <clears throat> the subject of, uh, of my talk today is going to be about uh, the utilization of uh, the ICT or the role of the ICT uh, in water resources management at, uh, at Egypt, at our ministry. Content of, uh, of the presentation today is going to be uh, highlighting the importance of the ICT, uh, the ITU efforts, uh, ITU is the International Telecommunication Units, uh, uh, International Telecommunication Union efforts uh, in smart water management. We are going to present uh, MWRI telemetry system component, how the data flow, what is what type of data monitored, what is the system features. We're going to present, um, I'm going to present the telemetry tools. Uh, also, uh, some of the research and development work that have been done in the ministry uh, in, the, in the same field is going to be presented. I'm going to present a, a small pilot project funded by ITU for groundwater smart management. Uh, and there is a very interesting application. It is called WaterNav mobile application, which was implemented by uh, the GIS unit at the ministry. And I'm going to present also uh, a small pilot project of utilizing the Internet of Things or IoT uh, based for, uh, for ET station uh, to measure ET. And it is uh, from Corpoda University. What is the role of the ICT in water resources management? Uh, ICT con contribute uh, to uh, many subjects like satellite earth observation, as we see, the real time monitoring networks, the subject of the presentation today, the GIS system, cloud based, geo information, I IoT, and the interconnection of all this stuff to achieve integrated water resources management. Recently, this technology has been used by many authorities all over the world, including uh, our country and our ministry. And also, uh, I would like, maybe uh, not all of you is going to agree with this statement, that's uh, depending on the historic uh, hydraulic and weather pattern to predict uh, future variable, is no longer, is no longer practical practical due to the high weather, uh, due to the climate change and the high uh, variability of the data and stuff like this. And if I would like to make it accurate, I would like to stress on the need of the like ground truthing or real measurements uh, to be in conjunction uh, with this prediction or modeling stuff. I'd like to present the IT, ITU efforts, ITU is the International Telecommunication Union. It is uh, the biggest history uh, authority in the world concerned with uh, ICT, uh, information and communication technology. And what is the efforts in uh, smart water uh, management? ITU is uh, a UN agency. 
uh, it develops uh, standards, uh, define elements of uh, global infrastructure of any ICTs. And I, uh, uh, ITU recognized uh, three years ago the positive influence of ICT that can play in allocation, distribution, treatment, and management of available water resources, and has implemented uh, a special uh, focus group uh, FG for SWM, which is smart water management, that put the standards for such system, component, uh, what we should take care of. Okay, and how, how we can, yeah, um, what is the role of ICT for water resources management in Egypt? Actually, um, um, uh, in our country or in our ministry, we are utilizing the information and communication to current technology to look after every and each drop of water from the sky, in the water courses, underground, at every place. Okay, so the ICT can help in collection, in the measurements, in the acquisition, in the transmission, in the analysis of the data and information about water resources, and will potentially and will help in improving the water management through proper data dissemination and also information accessibility. The ministry, the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation in Egypt is utilizing these ICT tools and we will see later uh, what, what kind of these tools and what kind of data to support diff different level uh, of planning, management, decision makers at the ministry towards achieving uh, sustainable development. Okay. <clears throat> then, towards this goal, the ministry established the so-called Central Directorate of Monitoring and Communication it is called telemetry system to monitor the water resources in a real-time manner in order to fully control each and every drop of water and optimize its location and maximize benefits of this drop of water. Uh, the cur currently, the ministry has uh, 300 plus sites or locations where it is like completely or automatically, no human interaction. Uh, it is M to M or machine to machine talk together, provide data to decision maker, and having this continuous and accurate data as we saw in the previous information, it is good to have data, but have to be accurate, okay? And having this data in real time sense will, will allow the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation officials and water distribution managers, crisis managers, take right decisions at the right time, and they immediately respond to any event or forecast any future uh, trend or crisis management. And this is the telemetry <laughs> component as uh, actually in, uh, in there's many types of sensors. We have like a, a very solid infrastructure. It can be, it is a universal. It is like follow the, the, the published standard. So it can be used for any type of sensor. Any, right now we are utilizing the system for all water related data. As we see, uh, like rain sensor, uh, water level to, 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 to see the water level uh, to, uh, data, flow sensors, uh, solar radiation, temperature sensor, anything related to water. And this is the sensing or, or, the, the, or the, the first component, which is I would like to, to measure the physical quantity through using the sensor. Then this goes to the data acquisition equipment, which is very important piece of it have to be it have to like correctly read the values measured from the sensors and we have a communication module actually uh, at the moment we are utilizing any kind of communication right now we are using this mobile communication and we will see later how it is secure and safe and in, in places where mobile communication is not covered we have another solution uh, through a cheap solution through using satellite uh, communication and these sites are remote sites, there is no power, there is no accessibility for the utility power, so it is all powered from a solar power, from a battery, and this battery is uh, powered, uh, is, uh, is charged by a solar panel through solar uh, regulator. And this is how the data flow, the, the, there is equipment at the field sites, and we have uh, two servers at the ministry, and these servers, like, all the time, 
bulls or, or ask these remote sites to send, to send the data which is being measured. And in this server, we have like an authorization table with the names of the people who should receive this data, the name and what type of data should be transferred. And this data is automatically transferred, disseminated to a specific user, as we see. So in my mobile now, I have information about uh, the data we have. Okay, what we are monitoring? We are monitoring water levels, upstream and downstream. We are monitoring bump operation, like to know when the bump get on and off, so, and, and later on, we can know the bump flow. We are monitoring, uh, also we are measuring water flow through water levels and speed. And we are measuring like uh, maximum, minimum water level during the day, average velocity, and then we get the average charge. At the end of the day, we get the accumulative volume of the water. Also, we are measuring water quality. Uh, the main parameter we are measuring is pH and DO and turbidity. We have meteorological uh, station also, rainfall, air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, wind direction. And actually, we are using, we have like uh, over 40 sites out of this distributed all, all over the country. And this data is being used for ground truthing of the model for forecasting. So we, we, we frequently uh, update the model. Okay, uh, this is very important. Yeah, it is very good to have sites and uh, bring up uh, telemetry sites and have a network or so. But what we took care uh, uh, when uh, implementing uh, these systems, because like I can measure like uh, the wind speed was, was like $30 sensor and was $3,000 sensor. So uh, first we have to look at the accuracy. How much accuracy you accept? So we don't pay too much money for things we don't need, or we pay less money for things that we are not going to need. This is the first thing, accuracy. Second is the secure communication. Actually, our communication network is very secure. We have an APN name. It is called access point name, or the so-called virtual private network. So our data is very secure. Actually, uh, I have been here that uh, the APN in Egypt Nobody, it, it is not, it, it have not been or uh, not been subject to anybody interfere to it or uh, or go, and so it is very secure. And something also the sustainable operation of these sites. It should be low power consumption because, as we said, it is powered from a solar cell, and sometimes this solar is not cleaned or no proper maintenance in it. It should have a low maintenance. It should be environmental resistance. And the most important thing is the customization. Actually, uh, in our ministry, when we built this system, we built it by our engineers, local engineers. We did, we did the software development, we did the data dissemination, we are doing the data analysis, we are even programming this data acquisition unit. So level of customization is very broad. So, uh, and this is very important because you are not gonna, you, are, you, you don't want to get stuck with, with type of manufacturer, so you are limit uh, your capabilities or stuff like this. And the most important thing is the simplicity. The system is very simple. And the overall, it has to be economic. And as I said, we are doing this by the Egyptian people who only buy equipment, and we'll see later that even the equipment will start to do research and the development work in order to save this money. And th this slide is showing how the data, like uh, the data flow diagram from different sites, from the Nile River, from the pump station, from the drains, from uh, meteorological sites, and it goes to the private EBN, and that goes to the two servers in the ministry, and from the two servers, the data get distributed to all users and stuff like this without any human uh, interaction. And this is, the, this is uh, a picture showing the component of the system and to show the simplicity of the equipment. And this is so how efforts uh, our engineers is doing in installation. We don't depend on contractors. We have our tools, we have our technician, we have our engineers. We do did everything. Okay. As long as we have this data collected, okay, 
we can have like an early warning system. This is example of early warning system that uh, installed at one of the pumping station, so it can give alert uh, to the users. This is like uh, a decision support system for the drainage monitoring, uh, monitoring network in Egypt. We have a monitoring network for the drainage system, and this is the schematic diagram of the drains and the sites. And the, 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 the green circle means everything is okay. If this circle getting red, that means it's out, out of the limits or something like this. And this is like an example of real-time console of the data. The data can be, uh, this is in the center, uh, can be in graphs or tabular form. This is, we have also data management system which contain historic data. So I can compare the data collected now with the previous years see how, uh, how this, and this is example of the historical data. And I would like to say that we are not stopping. The telemetry department is continuously upgrading its tools to cope with advances in information communication technology and to expand the monitoring location to support integrated, efficient, and smart water resources management in the country. And this is some of the research and the development work we got like a fund from the National Telecommunication Regularity Authority in Egypt to develop the heart of any telemetry system, the data acquisition system, which is uh, the device in the bottom. And also we developed like a very simple uh, moisture sensor, uh, depend on galvanized cell uh, we made in Egypt, you know, and we are testing at the moment to, to have it spread. Okay, this is, uh, this is the ITU project for smart water ground management. We can define uh, policy for the operation of the groundwater wells. We have a mobile application to, to, to operate and control these wells. And this is the water map mobile application, which is been developed by GIS unit in the ministry. This is the, 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 the user, the decision maker, can stay at any place in the, in the, in the, in the network in Egypt. It tell you uh, what is the name of this place, uh, belongs to which district or which handasa, uh, and complete information about this automatically. And this is the area covered now, Delta, Sinai, Sohaga, Siut, and Giza. And the people are working in expanding this application. I would like also to present this very fast, called uh, DOBA uh, ET system, which, uh, depend, which uh, determines uh, ET. And this is uh, assist in determining uh, determine the water productivity and irrigation requirement. And it's going to be used later to calibrate and validate the remote sensing. Uh, and, that's, and this is the way out. And thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Ayman, for uh, your uh, interesting presentation about the comprehensive work that uh, the Ministry is doing. It has been a great session. Um, I do apologize that we went a little bit over time because we started a bit late. Uh, so I just want to open the floor for questions. Do we, ha we have one mic with me? Uh, if, I, if, if somebody can take the mic from... And we have another mic there. Uh, okay, first hand, right here, uh, Dr. Hany. Do we have any other questions? Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Askari. Hany uh, Sweden from Aachen University in Germany. My, uh, I have two questions, if you allow me. My first question to uh, Giovanni. Giovanni, um, you said um, that the European Union did not achieve the objective of the Water Framework Directive, which is achieving uh, good water quality. Um, I was expecting that the next step that will be about how to achieve a good water quality, but then you mentioned that the next step is a nexus, water, energy, food, nexus. Um, do you think that this is going to achieve good water quality? And how, um, what's the plan for this? I mean, if we did not achieve objective, I was expecting that we see what are the good practice, which country achieved the most, what are the models we developed, and then we build on that. But I just feel that the orientation is changed completely from the good water quality to interdisciplinary type of, of research or implementation. My other point to uh, Dr. Hisham, uh, you heard the session yesterday about the, the GERD, and you heard also how the hydrological data are playing a very important role in the decision-making process and the negotiation. What would be your advice based on the very interesting results 
that you presented today because I highly appreciate the work you did, but I would like you to translate it to practical uh, messages to uh, the people involved within this fight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're going to take another question. And do we have any other questions from the floor? Okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kerman. Uh, my name is Sadiq Isa from the University of Care and Water Resources, Khartoum, uh, Sudan. Uh, actually, my first question goes to the first uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Daniel, on far modernization. Uh, the question is that uh, from his presentation, we can see that the key issue is the water supply uh, flexibility. Daniel, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I, you can, I hear? can hear you. Yep. Can you hear? Okay. Okay. The key issue is the flexibility of the water supply. Uh, because for the modernization, the technique is there, the technology is there. If there is no flexible water supply, then modernization is nothing. So I would like really to appreciate very much if uh, Dr. Daniel to elaborate more on the flexibility of, the, uh, of such water supply. Uh, I am from Sudan where we have surface irrigation uh, is commonly practiced in large scale irrigation schemes. We have the famous scheme, the Jazeera scheme, which is about one million hectares. And he said that surface organization can be modernized. Once again, uh, if there is a possibility for more elaboration, uh, because we have, what are the problems if we, uh, we are on the process of, uh, you know, of modernizing that surface irrigation? Okay. Are we going to improve the safety irrigation or do you convert it to other models? Uh, another thing also for, for Daniel, if possibility uh, to compare about the productivity of, uh, of, uh, of uh, modernization against conventional, again also the cost of modernization against conventional system as well as the water efficiency. Uh, this is uh, for Daniel. Okay. Uh, I have uh, one question to Dr. Ayman from Egypt. I uh, will be very uh, grateful if he can emphasize on any ideas about the problems uh, they are faced for the operation and maintenance uh, of the telemetry system as well as the running cost. Uh, the last one goes, it can be answered by Dr. Askari or um, Elga or Zahran. Uh, we are on the process of devising a tool to assist the irrigation managers uh, uh, to manage the water for irrigation more efficiency using remote sensing and GIS. Okay. I would like uh, if there is a possibility to, to emphasize on cropping by that. Okay, uh, cropping pattern, cropping area and crop stage in terms of uh, uh, the predictivity uh, prediction by remote sensing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, let me start by uh, Giovanni to address uh, Dr. Hen's question. Yes. Um, okay. Let me say, first of all, I do agree that, as I said, we haven't reached yet the level of water quality we wanted to achieve, and we need to continue. So that's why we have now adopted this fitness check, whereby we need to understand why not. What is the real missing gap? How can we do better to improve the quality? Don't forget that the water quality is also an evolving concept. You know, now we do need to consider also new micro, micro pollutions that we, micro inquinants that we, we, we did not consider in the past, including plastic and microplastic. So I think it's an important effort to understand what we can do better in improving the water quality in Europe. However, as I said, together with the concept that now water should not be any more studied and and consider as a splendid isolation, but with other sectors that use water. So how to improve the water treatment facilities, how to better use the re water reuse in agriculture, how we can get profit from this new technology that make possible use of water in different sectors. So I think that the combination of improving water quality per se which is again under study, and we need to understand what is the best area where we can improve and why different, let's say, bodies in the different river basin, especially in the northern and central Europe, are still not in a good ecological status. And what can we do effectively much better in the next future? However, together with the 
use and, and, and misuse of some other sectors that they do have an influence on the water quality. And I'm talking about, again, the coal plants or the, the nuclear plants or the, the, the irrigation activity. So these are the things that should be would now studied together. Thanks. Um, I will I will ask Elga to address the question about the irrigation or the systems that was mentioned from the colleague from the Khartoum about like they are establishing new irrigation systems and how earth observations can be uh, of of use for that. Do you do you would like to to take that question? I can say. Um, automatically work. Can you hear me? I don't know. It's, yeah. Yeah. As long okay. as it's green. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So. Um, I think there are many um, remote sensing products that, can, that are available to, to work on, on this. And um, I think if the, the specific question was more about the crop and the phenology and, uh, and this type of thing. I think it's, there is a lot of progress. It's still difficult. I think it's more challenging than, than just uh, normal mapping. Uh, I think one effort certainly is this Babbor database I was discussing about. Uh, of course, the resolution might not be, I don't know, you said very large, right? Irrigation schemes. Mm -hmm. um, so there are maybe 30 meter resolution could be sufficient. And I know there is a lot of uh, development in looking at um, how to uh, close the, like mm -hmm. analyzing the current stage. So monitoring what's happening today and see what are the maybe yield gaps. So what is the, I don't know, most performing farmers versus least performing farmers and looking at the current practices there and what is actually achievable in that direction. Um, I think a specific, I don't personally have a lot of experience with the modeling itself of crops. So I think it was one of the speakers was discussing about the software for uh, crop growth. Huh? Was, it, was it about the European approach that may be also interesting? For us, it's more like a remote sensing snapshot of the current situation. I think there is uh, a lot of possibilities there. Thank you. Uh, Howard, did you hear the question, Daniel? Did you hear the question that was um, asked to you? Uh, yes. Okay. I, I did. Can, okay. can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can go ahead and answer that. We're well, trying okay. to get your picture here, so you, you, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, just so I don't hear the feedback, if hopefully uh, no one's going to talk to me right now, so I'm not going to listen in. Um, the first, the first piece of the question was uh, uh, why is service so important for on-farm modernization? Why is water delivery service? Uh, the uh, the answer is that that um, right now a lot of the international projects are are uh, um, on a rotation, even in. Uh, some in the U.S. are on a, what we call a rotation, which means that project dictates when and how much the farmers get to irrigate. So there's there's no way to schedule irrigations using uh, evapotranspiration or remote sensing or weather stations. Um, there's uh, when you you go to uh, sprinklers or drip, you have to have uh, much more frequent irrigations. Uh, you could have flow rates that are changing over time. Um, and those systems just don't have the ability to handle it uh, without spilling a lot of water or uh, without modern uh, infrastructure in the project itself. So uh, basically, uh, you want to have some flexibility. Um, you want to you want to put in a new system. You want to try to schedule irrigations. You have to move away from a rotational irrigation delivery system uh, to a, a, an arranged system where you have water on demand, kind of like we do at home, um, at our homes usually. So, uh, and farmers just don't have that. If you don't, you can't, there's no reason to talk about um, farm modernization. Um, second question was uh, consideration of modernizing surface irrigation versus going to other systems. Uh, that's a tough question without knowing specifics about the area. Uh, you know, the topography, the soil types, uh, the size of the farms, uh, what are the uh, technical capabilities. Um, in, in many cases, uh, you have uh, 
areas where you don't have someone that can work on a pump or a motor, you don't have electricity, um, fuel costs are very high, so it wouldn't make sense to put in a pressurized system. In those cases, the modern modernizing your surface irrigation may be the best bang for your buck. Um, those are the things that we would need to consider. Um, and then the last question was cost of modernization versus uh, water use efficiency. Uh, I think it becomes a, a lot more fundamental than that. <laughs> uh, it, our world population is growing. Um, the area and the resources that we can dedicate to growing food is not increasing. So we have to get more production per acre and more production per uh, unit um, of water and other input, including energy. So considering all these things, um, the investment cost is uh, is is going to be well worth it. Um, there's it, it, the alternative is people that are that are uh, going to hungry, and uh, and that's not not acceptable. So, I think from from a fundamental standpoint, the cost of modernization is something that has to be considered, has to be invested in, um, in the short term. Thank you so much, Daniel. And uh, for me to address the comment from Dr. Haney. Um, I'm not an engineer. I'm not. I'm not gonna get into like you know the the precaution measures that needs to be done for the jury. But it is quite obvious that uh, from the data that was presented to us yesterday, and based on the baselines that were presented to us yesterday, and and based on the analysis that was done by um, uh, our colleagues and our friends, and uh, showing that kind of threshold where it's considered to be. Uh, a drought level and this kind of flow uh, to be the baseline for uh, the explanation of drought, um, it just misses a lot of other information that must be taken into consideration. This is by far uh, not scientific in any way, and that I can talk about from uh, from uh, an academic point of view, like you know, as an independent scientist uh, with academic ethics and like integrity. Uh, I, I would I would say you know what like let's look at the data let's uh, just very simple uh, garbage in garbage out like this is what we do with the models you put wrong information you are gonna end up with wrong decisions so what you need to do is to really look into all the other physical systems which do exist and look into it from a holistic point of view and really take into account uh, events like this when when we are aware that El Nino is driving the system and it does have an impact in a specific cycle or specific frequency, there is no point for me not to consider the other Nino years where it can really make a huge difference in the definition of what is considered to be uh, a dry period or drought. That's why, like, you know, just based on the analysis that we did at, like, you know, uh, of course, a lot of depth in it, but based on what was presented yesterday and based on the correlation that do exist between uh, the precipitation data or the flow data and uh, uh, the, the Nino cycles. So by just taking those peaks into account, you saw that the level of the definition of what's considered to be drought just went up all the way from 30 to 40 plus. And we did not talk yet about PDO and the other uh, drivers to the climate system. So I think this whole thing needs to be uh, looked at um, in, in a very uh, calm way, as well as from a scientific point of view. This is why you are doing research and innovation. Otherwise, if science is not going to help us to make better decisions, so why you are doing science? Uh, or why you are trying, looking into data or trying to do this kind of analysis? So my, my, um, my two cents would be uh, this needs to be looked at. And um, uh, from independent uh, point of view, this needs to be looked at, needs to be considered um, uh, with open minds and open hearts. So that's, that's my answer. Uh, do we have any other questions? Dr. Ayman, uh, if you would uh, like to address that. Okay, the question about the problems you are say, uh, facing with uh, operation and uh, maintenance. Uh, of course, there is a problem, yeah. But uh, from the beginning, from the beginning, we we'll minimize uh, these problems through selecting uh, the proper equipment uh, and then through putting like a, a, a very good uh, preventive maintenance program and stuff like this. And the kind of problem we are facing, uh, sometimes uh, the network, the communication networks get down. Uh, something also securing these remote sites. Uh, this is uh, other problem we are using. Uh, 
but this is not a big, you know, this is, we, we cannot consider and put it as a big problem. And other problem, logistics problem, like uh, uh, having uh, the engineers and the right stuff and stuff like this, because most of the people move, uh, and that's all. I, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ayman. Uh, I would like to thank all our esteemed uh, panelists uh, who contributed to that session. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who attended, and uh, we do apologize that we went a little bit over time. Everybody's in the coffee break right now, uh, so the coffee break is uh, more important than research innovation. Please join me in welcome and in thanking our, uh, our speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Daniel. We'll be in touch. Take care. I'll see you.